Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cameo Elements of Power commentary. We have rescued Pummelweed and we're back in the Enchanted Kingdom, so before we set out on our quest to recover Cameo's family, it's time to take a little look around with our new warrior and see what we can see. Uh, and in fact, there's two important things that Pummelweed can do for us. It's, uh, the first one is that Pummelweed can go under these gates, which gives him access to the interior areas of the Enchanted Kingdom, and in turn, a room that a lot of people don't ever go and see, but is actually pretty important and full of goodness. So, let's head inside the Chamber of Living Portraits. Once we make our way past this loading screen, there we go, there is a crystal eye up there. We'll talk more about those in just a moment, but we can't get that yet, so for now, we're going to wander through, and if you're interested in the backstory of the Elemental Warriors, you can talk to these uh, paintings on the wall and they will tell you a little bit about the function of each warrior in nature and some backstory. Uh, the elemental warriors have been handed down uh, across the generations of elves, particularly the royal family, and they haven't always been used for uh, nice and kind purposes. But here, yes, although I'll do the explaining, thank you, here is the magic mirror. And fun thing about the magic mirror is that you can go back and replay levels to earn scores and uh, if you can beat certain score thresholds you can unlock cheats, old videos, uh, animatics, unused uh, elements and, and various other fun things. We're not going to go back to Thorn's Castle just yet because after all we've only just been there uh, but we will uh, we will have a little wander around the rest of the Enchanted Kingdom. The other thing that Pummelweed can do, he said, waiting for the loading screen to finish, is he can head out, if we head out to this beach area here, Pummelweed will be able to flip the shells that we find on the beach. There's one. Sometimes they don't always have nice things underneath them, there's a, a nasty kind of water crab beastie. But this one has an elemental fruit under it, which we are going to use later. Yes, thank you, Arthur. And this one has not much of anything. But this one has something rather special. Yes, this is the uh, downside of leaving your connect plugged in. <clears throat> yes, this is a crystal eye. There, look at it, isn't it shiny? Yes. We're going to turn into Cameo and pick it up because the Crystal Eye will go into the Whatnot book and they're a bit like um, equipment in RPGs, I suppose. If you have a look at this one, this is the Eye of Restoration. You see Cameo has uh, a spirit bar, the blue bar, underneath her energy and that gets depleted whenever a warrior uses a particularly powerful attack. The Eye of Restoration if you assign it, uh, will make it take longer for your spirit bar to refill once it's empty, but you will recover health if you're not being attacked. So uh, there's a pro and a con. I'm going I'm to leave it off for now, but because uh, I like using lots of moves quickly and it helps us zip around the place. But the crystal eye, and the fact that it is a crystal eye, uh, helps lead into our next topic, because when we go back and see the mystic, we're going to learn all about Halice's fate, and in the Xbox version of the game, uh, we would have actually used the crystal eye that I have in my possession, and we'd have found that with Pummelweed and taken it to the Mystic, and that would have been how we'd have learned where we needed to go next. So we'll go back, say hello to the Mystic, and she's going to grudgingly, I should say, she's going to grudgingly show us where Halice is. The Mystic's plan for Cameo is that she should focus on finding the Elemental Warriors, and her uh, reasoning for that is that it's the only way he's going to, to uh, she's rather, is going to be able to stop Thorn. Which, there's a logic to it, but uh, as you'll come to see, the Mystic has other reasons as well. So there he is, Halas is in the Forest Temple. He's been captured by Old Morwood. So we are going to head to the Forgotten Forest by way of the Badlands. The Badlands is the large battlefield area underneath the Enchanted Kingdom, which we'll get to in a second. But other thing about the Crystal Eye is on the Xbox version there was no battlefield. 
Uh, you'll see why when we get down there. But that would have meant that the crystal eye would have opened this gate and it would have taken us directly to the Forgotten Forest instead. Uh, that's no longer the case though, so we're going to follow the trainer back into the inner areas of the castle. There he goes. Once again, we're going to follow him with Pummelweed. And we'll head inside the rather gloomy Dungeon of Eternal Life. That's another uh, little hint that the elves were not always the nicest bunch of people throughout history. Not only is this a dungeon where they keep their enemies, unlike the Shadow Trolls who were just cast into the Shadow Realm, this dungeon is actually uh, a magical place that means you will live forever as long as you're in here. It's not like you're going to spend the rest of your life, you're going to spend eternity locked up in this place. Which, even when you've got your mortal enemies uh, in these chambers, is, is pretty harsh. It's not, uh, it's not exactly a forgiving, kind-hearted way of dealing with your opponents. It's also the lowest place in the Enchanted Kingdom, so it's a good exit point for Cameo to drop down onto the Badlands. And from a logistical point of view it kind of makes sense, because uh, if you have captured enemies that you're bringing back with you, you want to be able to bring them up from the battlefield and put them straight into the dungeon. You don't want to be traipsing them through the palace gardens and things first, just in case they escape and make the place look unsightly. Here is Farron. He is the no-nonsense uh, mysterious stranger who's kind of taken the unofficial responsibility of being captain of the guard in the royal family's absence. He doesn't particularly uh, have any affinity towards Cameo, but he is going to lend her a horse, which is handy because the battlefield has been very slightly overrun by trolls. See if you can spot them. There's one. And, yep, there's, there's another one there. So, yep, there's, there's trolls dotted about. And uh, we just keep on pulling back. This is something that only the Xbox 360 version uh, of the game could have handled, which is why the battlefield didn't exist in the original Xbox version. It was a good E3 reveal to be able to swing the camera out and keep going. But we're just going to cut us way through these trolls here. Make it down to the bottom of the hill. We'll actually turn our map on momentarily so you can get a good look at the uh, the scale of the battlefield and the size of the place. Here come our forces, the elves as well. Uh, this was uh, kind of a, a last minute decision to put these soldiers in, uh, but it was a really helpful one because if we turn around now you'll see that the trolls and the elves are, are fighting and Ortho actually explicitly says leave the, uh, the trolls for the elves to deal with. If you want to ignore him you can actually go and wipe out every single uh, elf, uh, every single troll rather, they don't wipe out the elves, they've got their own problems. Uh, the reason for that was that when, when we didn't have it, a lot of people just assumed that you did need to actually kill all the trolls, because that was kind of what they'd been doing up until this point, so yeah. Um, if you want to run around and take out several enemies um, over and over again on your horse, you can do that, but we are going to press on, we have things to do. As you can see, the Badlands is pretty huge. Uh, there are a few places like this hut dotted around. Let's, uh, let's dismount the horse because we're nearly at the nearly at the forest anyway, and I'll just go and have a look inside this hut. As you can see, despite being an abandoned hut, it's not actually abandoned. It's full of trolls. But we know what we do with trolls around here. And even though we've only got pummelweed. still make short work of these brutes. One's done for. So is his mate. Ah, they've got a love one of your focus, but they don't really stand. It's almost cheating. Um, we're done. Goodbye, everybody. As you can see, there's no one left in this hut, but there is money in this hut, which is kind of why we came inside. Because we like runes, we like rip boo uh, we like being able to buy things, we like being able to stimulate the Forgotten Forest economy. Anything more in there? Yes, more money for us. Jolly good, 43 runes, that's kind of respectable. Now, let's press on to the Forgotten Forest. I'm not going to bother getting back on the horse, because it's only over here. We'll give Cameo's wings an airing. 
We'll be back to the Badlands later because uh, the Enchanted Kingdom is kept aloft by elemental shrines and we'll ha we're going to need to take a, a look at those in more detail later on. But for now, we're going after Halis in the Forgotten Forest. Or so we think, but in fact, the Forgotten Forest is currently locked off. But it's okay because there's another Shadow Troll and another elemental warrior. So, yes, oh, actually, we will follow the Shadow Troll, but we'll get this fruit first, because we're going to do upgrade rubble once we get him back. As Otho has said, we need rubble. So he is our next objective. Out of the way. These little ostriches are uh, actually uh, survivors from uh, another unreleased Xbox 360 game involving Saberman, so it's nice to uh, see them live on in one form or another. This cloud of bats is the Shadow Troll's preferred way of getting around a place, so we're going to chase it, and ah, it's put some vines in front of us, but not to worry, we can squeeze underneath. It's going to take more than that to uh, stop us from chasing. We'll sashay around those bugs, and we'll beat up this plant, because why not? We have no respect for the local ecosystem. And with the plant defeated, we can make it back under these vines, and we're almost to the Mushroom Cavern. Chasey, chasey. These exciting high-speed commentary insights, like chasey, chasey, which is hopefully keeping you glued to these videos. So there it is, Shadow Troll number two, behind Shadow Well number two. It's behind a rickety wooden fence, but if you were watching last time, Frankly, if you weren't watching last time, why have you skipped straight to episode 2? That's just weird. We have a rickety wooden fence, we have a shell, we have a pummelweed, we have an explosion. And behind the shadow, well, you may notice these dormant statues. They, uh, they have goodies inside them, but there's nothing we can do to activate them yet. However, there is a mysterious plinth with Rubble's face on it. Hmm. What could it mean? Let's head back into the Shadow Realm. Now, the first Shadow Troll was a bit of a wuss. Uh, he was almost certainly not one of uh, Thorn's brightest stars, but this Shadow Troll is going to get a little bit more advanced. Hiding as he is behind that pillar. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. <gasps> You'd think after a couple of times, Camille would get used to being snuck up on by these guys, but she never seems to learn. Right. Like before, we are going to get a lost soul from the ground when one deems to make an appearance. There we go. Two at a time this time, so you've got to be careful. And then the Shadow Troll. See if we can get a hit on him. Yes, we can. This Shadow Troll doesn't uh, sit idly and mock you. He is a nimble little chap and likes to whiz around the place. So tracking him down and hitting him before he can move again when he coalesces like that becomes important. And there we go, Shadow Trolls nothing, cameo 2. And he's going to drop rubble. Interestingly, the uh, elemental sprites used to have different names uh, to the adult warriors, so this little chap was called Flint Debris. Uh, most of the warriors had different names at one point through development. Pummelweed used to be called Flower Boxer, for example, which uh, is a rather nice pun. And there we go. Cameo has taken Rubble back into the Whatnot book, so his elemental sprite form can be restored into his proper warrior-ness. But unfortunately for Rubble, his rocks right now will only stun things, and that's no good for us. We want to be able to deal some damage. Because if you stun a troll, uh, he'll be dizzy, but you've still got to get over there with something else and, f and finish him off. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's a bit of a faff, so we are going to straight away head into the Whatnot book and spend our fruit on Rebel's Razor Stone. As you can see, we have the right amount. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Also, you'll notice that uh, the bottom most uh, upgrade for any warrior is always uh, a lengthening spirit bar, so they can have twice as much uh, spirit, which is always pretty useful. Right now we're going to give Rubble Spiky Rocks. Yeah, Spiky Rocks! 
Also, if, if you feel like it, you can uh, read a little bit more about Rubble's backstory, and you'll notice that Rubble also comes with an alternate skin or two. These are because the Rare Replay version of Cameo comes with the various DLC packs that were released over time. So there's Rubble's Armoured mode from Expert mode, the Halloween pack, and back to normal. Let's just quickly say there's a, just a standard triple skin and a Christmas pack as well from the Winter Warrior pack. There we go. We'll stick with default Rubble for now. Ow. Well, Pesky mosquitoes are pesky, so let's take out that nest. Rubble Hurt can fling his rocks at two different heights, depending on which trigger you use. Also, if we head over here and sit on the Rubble Plinth, the statue is going to start coming to life, and if we feed it a rock, don't worry, they'll always come back to Rubble because of reasons. We can lift the cage and get ourselves yet more elemental fruit. Which, in fact... Uh, Yes, I am going to spend on Pummelweed. I'm going to up his spirit. See, he loves it. It's like all of his Christmases at once. We'll spend a lot of time as Pummelweed, particularly in the, uh, in the early stages of the game, so it's nice to give him as much spirit as possible. And we're going to grab this elixir to give Cameo herself a top up. Yes, Cameo enjoys her elixirs. Possibly too much. Right. There's trouble a brewing, so let's use rubble to take out the rest of these mosquitoes, which is going to give us yet more fruit, because there's a trapped forest villager over here. Kind of a scientist explorer type who was investigating the, uh, the forest cave. And we've unleashed all manner of mosquito-related hell upon him, so now we'll tidy up after ourselves, take out the mosquitoes. I believe there's one more, but I can't remember where it is. Well, have I just got to take out the final mosquito? Yes, I have. It's been a while. Thank you, and with... If I don't want to talk to you, you may leave. Get out of my sight. Away. Away with you. This oversized elemental fruit, which Cameo is still going to put into her nap sack because she has that power, is worth three. So it's well worth helping out villagers because uh, the more elemental fruit you have, the more you will win. It's just basic maths. Okay, we have rubble. Let's head back out to the Forgotten Forest and have a little look around the village area. There are four what we loosely termed adventure areas in Kamiya. The first one we've already been around briefly in the form of the Enchanted Kingdom. This is the uh, second that you encounter in the game, but it was the first to be converted. Uh, and by that I mean that this puzzle involving the trees and using rubble to open the gates, which we'll, we'll do in a second, uh, was always here. They were always kind of puzzly areas before the more action-based levels. But uh, it was fairly desolate. There were no villagers. There, it wasn't a... A town in any sense of the word. So when we moved to the 360, again that was something that we decided we wanted to be able to do to make the areas feel a bit more lively. So uh, this was a test bed. Quite literally we worked out how many villagers we would need in the area to make it feel alive without being too noisy and could we do day-night routines and w where would people be able to go and how many woes could we fit in, all that, all that kind of good stuff. And as I take out this troll we will see that one such character, whose name is Dill, will give us another big elemental fruit as payment. And then because it's night time, I believe she will try and go to bed. Yep, there we go. And because Dill is a plant, she has a literal flower bed to sleep in. She just dives into the soil and won't come out until morning. Sleep well, Dill. I'm going to break everything in your house in search of money. Money, money, money. There we go. Lovely bunch of runes. We're up to 73 runes now, which means we should be able to head to the shop. I know our uncle is in the grip of an evil demon tree, but we have our priorities straight, and we know that shopping is important. So we'll head down to the first of many shops. 
Because it is night time, some villagers go home, but uh, that cave off in the distance there, just over that bridge, leads to the local cafe, Pumpkin Cafe. Um, so quite a lot of NPCs can be found in there in the evening. So here we can buy a giant heart. These are kind of disposable. They just fill your energy bar back up. Uh, another elixir of life. Elemental fruit. And the fruit finder newsletter. The fruit finder newsletter is a way to find all of the fruits that are out in the wild. Not the ones that are given to you by characters that you help, but the ones that are growing or hidden behind crates or wherever that may be. But right now, we're going to get ourselves a bigger wallet. So that as we go through our adventures, we don't hit our money cap. As you can see, actually, yes, let's show that off. Every set of villagers has unique elemental likes and dislikes. In this case, they like me because I'm a plant, and so are they. If I were a fire-based warrior, they would cower uh, and say bad things about me, which would hurt my feelings, so let's not do that. Instead, let's go and hit the guardian trees. Now, quite a lot of people keep trying to hit the trees one at a time, and that will only work momentarily. So instead, we're going to hold both triggers down, we will explode, get a text box, stop listening. I'm going to have to stop saying text box, clearly. And the forgotten forest lies in wait. What will we find in there? What will we find in there? Does he know? He doesn't know. And I don't know either. So let's save it for another day. That's it for this episode. Next time we'll enter the Forgotten Forest, deal with Old Moorwood, rescue Halis, and generally do hero stuff. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.